Today, we're going to look at an overview of the American Civil War, which ran from 1861 to 1865. After Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860, the southern states seceded from the Union. They thought Lincoln would try and end slavery. In his first inaugural address, Lincoln said the North would leave slavery alone, but would act to preserve the Union. This picture here, you see a headline... Lincoln elected president, November 6th, 1860. They formed the Confederate States of America. Now, if you look at this map, um, you see the progress of secession, which means the progress in which the southern states left the United States. The states here in blue, which you see here, left right after Abraham Lincoln was elected president. The ones represented in gray, didn't leave until after the start of the Civil War. Jefferson Davis was president of the Confederate States of America. And here you see a portrait of Jefferson Davis. In his inaugural address, Davis said the following, As a necessity, not a choice, we have resorted to separation. Our energies must be devoted to the conducting of our own affairs. But if denied, for purposes of defense, the Confederate states may rely upon their militia. And what Davis is saying is that if the North doesn't leave the South alone, there will be war. Robert E. Lee was made the military commander of the Confederate forces. Confederate is just another word for the South. And then here you see a picture of Robert E. Lee. On April 12, 1861, Southern forces began to bombard Fort Sumter at Charleston, South Carolina. This signified the start of the Civil War. Now, if you see this picture down here, these are Southern forces. Uh, they're firing cannons at Fort Sumter, which is in Charleston Harbor. Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee decided that the best way to end the war was to invade the North. In late 1862, Lee's forces had crossed into Maryland. There, they were met by Union forces. Now, if you see this picture here, you see Lee's forces here invading Maryland. And then you see the Northern forces coming from this direction to stop him. This battle was known as the Battle of Antietam. It was the bloodiest single day of the war. 6,000 soldiers were killed in just one day. The significance of this battle was that it stopped Lee's northward advance and caused him to retreat to Virginia. Now here's a couple of pictures showing the death and destruction of Antietam. Uh, here you see the open battlefield with the number of men killed. And then here's another one around a church building uh, showing the dead and wounded lying on the battlefield. Lincoln supported freeing the slaves if it would help the North win the war. But the Constitution did not give the president the power to end slavery. So Lincoln issued a military order freeing slaves only in areas controlled by the Confederacy. It would take effect January 1, 1863. This was the Emancipation Proclamation. It called for all slaves in Confederate-controlled areas to be freed. If you look at this picture here, you see a picture of Lincoln issuing his Emancipation Proclamation and telling the slaves that they would be freed. This proclamation had two significant effects. First, it disrupted the South's agricultural economy because slaves fled plantations. It also ended all chances of French or British help for the South. Slavery was condemned in both France and England. The Emancipation Proclamation gave the North the moral high road on the issue of slavery. After the Emancipation Proclamation, many African Americans joined the Union military. Eventually, about 180,000 African Americans served in the Union military during the war. African American soldiers distinguished themselves throughout the war. William Carney, who you see right here, was the first African American awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, this nation's highest honor. 
One of the Union strategies in the war was to gain control of the Mississippi River, cutting the South in half. They did this by winning the Battle of Vicksburg in July of 1863. This was the turning point in the West. Now here you have the Mississippi River, and by capturing Vicksburg, they now cut the South in to a western part and to an eastern part. In the summer of 1863, Robert E. Lee moved north in an attempt to cut off Washington, D.C. from the rest of the Union. For three days in early July, Union and Confederate armies met at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Lee ended up retreating. His army had suffered heavy casualties and was never able to go on the offensive again. This was the turning point of the war in the East. And here you see an artist's rendition of the Battle of Gettysburg, one of the most famous battles of the Civil War. After the battle, Lincoln gave his Gettysburg Address, which stressed the importance of liberty, equality, and democratic ideals. He reminded the people that the war was being fought to protect these principles. If you look at this photograph, this was a photograph that was discovered not too long ago of Lincoln at Gettysburg. Now here's a passage from Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, that this nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, and by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the face of the earth. Abraham Lincoln, November 19, 1863. Ulysses S. Grant eventually is placed in charge of the Union Army. And here you see one of the most famous wartime photographs of Grant. His philosophy was one of total destruction of not only Confederate forces, but also its economic resources. This was total war. He sent William Tecumseh Sherman down south to destroy anything that he came into contact with. And basically what he was trying to do was make the lives of southern citizens so miserable they would want to see the end of the war. Lincoln was re-elected in 1864, and in his second inaugural address, he stated he wanted to treat the southern states without malice, which means anger, after the Civil War. Lincoln felt it was best to end the hostilities as quickly as possible and to bring the southern states back in without the anger that had been in place for the last four years during the Civil War. By early April 1865, Union troops began to pour into the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia. During the second week of April, Grant's army had surrounded Lee in the small town of Appomattox Courthouse. Lee realized his situation was hopeless and decided to surrender. This ended the Civil War. And here you see a painting of Robert E. Lee surrendering to Ulysses S. Grant. The Civil War cost over 600,000 Americans their lives. It destroyed the South economically and ended slavery, which had been in place since the 1600s. Lincoln's job now was to reconstruct the United States and try and heal up the wounds caused by the war. On April 15, 1865, Lincoln was shot and killed by John Wilkes Booth. Vice President Andrew Johnson would now be responsible for the reconstruction of the United States. And here you see an artist's rendition of Lincoln being killed. Here's John Wilkes Booth. And of course, here's Abraham Lincoln. 